that it's time for you to be victorious. It's time for you to overcome. And I know you've been tired. I know you've been weary. I know you've been discouraged. I know you've been dealing with a lot. But God is saying, I've anointed you for such a time as this. But you're only going to win when you fight the good fight of faith. And when you fight with my word on the inside of you, says the Lord. You don't have to be discouraged. You don't have to be defeated. But you can overcome. You can win the battle. Yeah, you lost yesterday. I get it. We all lost. We all have been there. But God is saying your past does not have to determine your future. When you allow his word to take up residence on the inside of you, those battles you lost back then, you will win in the future because God is saying, I will fight for you. sincere prayer that this experience that we're about to encounter together will help you to become all that God has created you to be. So I encourage you, stay tuned, like, share, leave a comment below, tell everyone you know that we're about to grow together as we explore the keys of the kingdom. I'm so glad that you're here. A uh, special shout out to the KOTK family. I always appreciate your presence, your prayerful support, and the myriad of ways that you uh, show your support for this ministry. I don't take you for granted. Happy New Year to you all, by the way. And if you're here for the first time, welcome. My name is Travis A. Newsom, and I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, first off, if you want to find out more about this ministry or what it is that I do, I encourage you to reach out to me at travis.a.newsome.ministries at gmail.com. You might say that is a very long email address. It is, and it's and I had trouble seeing all of that or remembering all of that. Well, no worries. I have it for you right here. <laughs> Again, it's travis.a.newsome.ministries at gmail.com. Also, if this is your first time here and you just stumbled upon this video, stumbled upon this page, and you have no idea who I am, I'm glad you're here. And I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Travis A. Newsome. There you'll find other messages of hope and inspiration, as well as music that will inspire you, that will uplift you that would strengthen you in your spiritual journey. So I definitely encourage you to do that. And if you've been to my page before, you've been on my channel before, you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Don't delay any longer. Make sure you subscribe. That actually helps with the YouTube algorithm and it helps bring an awareness of this uh, channel to others who would be inspired as you have been blessed. Amen. So if this channel has been a blessing to you, share it with someone you know so they can be blessed along with you as well. Amen. Also, want to make sure that you download, stream, uh, purchase, uh, add to your playlist my new song, Gotta Thank You. For those of you who have heard the song and who've been blessed by it, thank you for reaching out to me. I've enjoyed seeing the reactions. If you haven't heard the song yet or the, haven't heard the song in its fullness, I encourage you, go to Spotify, go to iTunes, go to uh, Apple Music, any of the major digital platforms, you, you will find it there. It's called Gotta Thank You. 
Uh, make sure you add it to your playlist. Listen to it. Be encouraged by it. It's a great way to kick off the year by giving God thanks. And then lastly, over the past few weeks, I shared a video uh, entitled The Inspirational Music Collection. And it really was an extensive time of worship. It was a compilation of different moments that I've led worship down through the past few years. And uh, I believe it will be a blessing to you. It's something good to have on maybe in the background while you're uh, doing some stuff around the house or maybe while you're driving in your car. It's just good to listen to, helps to set the atmosphere for a great encounter with God. So I encourage you to partake of all of those things. Amen. I have said a lot, but you have no clue how I, how excited I am to get into this word. And I'll delve into why a little bit later on tonight. But let's get started with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to come together and to get into your word and to grow closer to you and to learn more about who you have made us to be and how we ought to live and how we can live victorious lives. God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for what you would do, God. And I thank you that we will not be the same as a result of this encounter tonight. I thank you that we shall all leave stronger. We shall all leave transformed. We shall all leave motivated and inspired to be and to do all that you've called us to become and to do. This is our prayer because this is what you have promised. This is our expectation. And we fervently believe that it shall come to pass just as you have promised. We thank you. And we ask it in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. And if you agree with this prayer, type amen in the chat and just make sure as we get into the word, feel free to engage in the chat. We have fun there. We encourage one another there. Uh, I encourage you just to engage. Let me know that you're out there. Let me hear you or let me see you, if you will. Love engaging with you in the chat. Enough of that. Let's get into the word. I'm excited. Turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 6. <laughs> 1 Timothy chapter 6. It is on tonight. Glory to God. First Timothy chapter six, and I'm going to read in your hearing out of verses 11 through 14. And it might sound a little different from the version that you have. I'll be reading out the King, new King James version. Might sound a little different than what you're familiar with, but we'll land in the same place. Again, first Timothy chapter six, verses 11 through 14. Hallelujah. But you, O man of God, Flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith, my God. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep this commandment without, without spot, blameless, until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing. Amen. So I read in your hearing out of 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 11 through 14. And if I had to, or I was required to give a title for our time together tonight, I would title it with this one simple word, fight. <laughs> fight. This particular book is actually a letter. In fact, it's referred to as an epistle. Um, many of the books in the New Testament of the Bible are really epistles. They're letters written by different leaders in the church, some apostles, uh, to, to people in the church, individuals in some cases, groups in some cases, uh, to encourage them, to offer instruction and clarity as it related to doctrine. And you have to be mindful that this book was written or these books were written in the context of the early church where there was a lot of persecution, still persecution today, but it was on a different level then. A lot of persecution, a lot of suffering for the faith. And so here Paul is writing, Paul, a great apostle, if you will, is writing to a young pastor by the name of Timothy. And yes, Paul in this letter is encouraging Timothy as it relates to persevering through the adversities of doing ministry work. But quite frankly, it's not just about ministry work. He's encouraging Timothy as a young man living this life, seeking to live for God. He recognizes being an older man himself. He recognizes the struggles of being a young man. He's been there and he's exhorting and he's encouraging Timothy and giving him instruction and wise counsel. And in the midst of this wise counsel, previous to the verses that we read, Paul warns Timothy about things that he should not get involved in, that he should not entangle himself with, things that often ensnare so many other young men. And then he continues in verse 11 by saying, pursue godliness, pursue love. Pursue gentleness, 
Because after all, the end game is being godly. The end game is being like him. That's why he's, that's why he talks about later on, I believe in verse, in verse 14, he talks about uh, the appearing of the Lord Jesus. That is the end game. Not necessarily uh, living, merely living our best life here, although that is a part of the journey. I'm not against that at all. But the end game is seeing Jesus. It's seeing God face to face. The end game is seeing God as he is. Wow, that is an awesome thought. But not only that, turn with me to 1 John chapter 3. Anybody who's watched Keys of the Kingdom on more than one occasion, you know where I'm going. 1 John chapter 3. Ah. Uh, one of my favorite passages, and I'm always hesitant to say that because it's all good. Lord knows it's all good, but this one stands out to me. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. It says, Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, my God. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Glory be to God. So we know that the end game is seeing God as he is. The end game is being transformed into his glorious image. Glory be to God. In fact, I want to go to another passage. I wasn't planning on going here, but I think this will be worth the while. Go with me to Philippians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Philippians chapter 3, beginning in verse 20. Paul writes and says, For our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. So we look forward to that day when we'll see Jesus face to face and we'll see God as he really is in all of his splendor and glory. And not only that, but we'll be transformed to, be, to look and to become just like him. That is a mind blowing thought. This is what the scripture says, and the scriptures cannot be broken. We believe that it's true. So we look forward to this day. We look forward to that great day when we shall see him as he is. And here Paul is reminding Timothy of the end game. He's saying, don't get caught up in all these snares that other young men get caught up in. No, pursue godliness, pursue faith, pursue love, pursue gentleness, pursue patience, pursue the virtues of God or the things of God or the character of God. But in this pursuit, Paul then goes on to say in the next verse, says, fight the good fight of faith. Now, interesting that Paul says fight, that Paul is encouraging Timothy to fight. That lets us know that this journey of becoming godly, this journey of becoming more Christ-like comes with adversity. And that's nothing new to any of us who've been in this walk. We know that when you commit yourself to walking with Jesus, when you commit yourself to living for God, you will face adversity you will face challenges. It's part of the journey. The fact that Paul says fight, it lets us know there is a fight to be fought. But not only does Paul say fight, glory be to God, but he says fight the good fight. Lord have mercy, I'm getting ahead of myself. You may be in a place where you feel weak or weary. Um, surely all the things that we face in, in this global society with a pandemic Wars and rumors of wars and, and Lord, just a myriad of host of other things, political upheaval, um, social injustice, racism, um, crime, uh, drug abuse, marital problems, problems in the home, problems with children, problems everywhere, here, there and everywhere. Lord, you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes those things can cause us to be weary and we don't feel like persevering. We don't feel like fighting might say, Paul is saying, fight the good fight. You might be saying, you're talking about fight. I don't feel like fighting. I get it. But here's the thing. Paul says yes to fight, but he says to fight the good fight. That lets us know that there's something at stake that makes the fight worth it. That lets us know that this is a worthy fight. This fight is not one that's fought in vain, but it's worthy. And the question becomes, why? I'm so glad you asked. Turn with me to, to James chapter 1. Hallelujah. James chapter one. And allow me to be my authentic self. I may get a little preachy tonight, but I promise you it'll be worth it because I feel like preaching. James chapter one, verse 12. 
Glory be to God. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Glory be to God. So here we see the crown of life that the writer is saying that if we endure temptation, if we endure test and trial, there is a crown that awaits us. Glory be to God. Let's turn here as well. Go with me to Romans, Romans chapter eight. Glory be to God. I feel the presence of God. I feel the presence of God. Hallelujah. I can feel I told you I felt preachy. Lord, I feel churchy, but it's all right. That's the authentic me. That's who God created me to be. So I'm going to be just that. Amen, somebody. Romans chapter eight. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter eight, verse 16. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Watch this. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Glory be to God. So he's saying we have a destiny that is that is likened unto Christ, that we are joint heirs with Christ, but that's only fully realized when we engage in a fight, mm. when we're willing to engage in the fight, to fight the good fight of faith. It's not going to come in flowery beds of ease. No, there's a fight. But he's saying it's worth the fight because of this reward, the crown of life, joint air status, the realization of joint air status. It's another passage I want to highlight. John chapter 14. Ooh, can you tell I'm excited? Glory to God. Hallelujah. John chapter 14. And let's look at verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do. He will do also, and greater works than these he will do because I go to my father, wow. So we see divine power. We see the crown of life. We see joint air status or the realization of joint air status, and we see divine power. And truth be told, there are many more blessings. I just named these few to give you an idea. But essentially, Paul is saying it's a good fight because it's a worthy fight. That it's a worthy fight makes it a good fight. What's at stake makes it a good fight. Glory be to God. Somebody type in the chat, say, fight the good fight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we must know here that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. <laughs> this is a metaphysical or spiritual fight. This is not a fist fight. No. In fact, sometimes, may I submit to you, a lot of times we exhaust ourselves, we frustrate ourselves because we're fighting the wrong fight. <laughs> we're fighting someone that we think is our enemy, but is really not. You think your enemy is that individual, but we, your real enemy is the spirit of that individual. Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. I'm getting ahead of myself. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians. Let's go there. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Hallelujah. I can feel the presence of God. I can feel the presence. I can feel him. Oh, Lord. It's funny. I used to make fun of people who moan like that in church. And God has a sense of humor because I became one. <laughs> turn, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I feel, I feel the presence of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. Uh-huh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And this is relevant because of what Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 6, looking at verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, no, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness, in the heavenly places. You're not fighting against your neighbor. Mm -mm. You're not fighting against politicians. Mm -mm. You're not fighting against someone of a different race. Mm -mm. It's really that spirit behind it. It's really the ideology. You know, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the, the anniversary of what was, Lord, how should I put it, of what was a horrible day in American history. Um, and as an American citizen, it's definitely a day that I won't forget. It's the day referred to uh, where the event took place that is commonly referred to as the insurrection. It's a day when 
uh, a group of individuals, a large group of individuals, uh, bombarded the U.S. Capitol because they did not like the results of the election. And that's significant because one of uh, America's uh, claims to fame um, is the fact that we're a democracy and the peaceful transfer of power. And this was a rare moment where that peaceful transfer was threatened. And it was a scary moment. It was a scary day where democracy was threatened, where this space where we're all given certain freedoms, whereby we can live and live for God, ideally, that that was threatened. The greater tragedy, quite frankly, is that some were doing it in the name of God. But Lord, that's a whole different video. Maybe I'll do that sometime. But it was a dark day. But I highlight it because really it began as a spiritual battle. Yeah, it manifested in the forms of people being physically violent. But it began as a battle about ideologies, ideas, and perspective, thoughts, and arguments. And that's really the realm of the enemy. That's really the realm of the adversary. Because ladies and gentlemen, a lot of times we think that adversarial situations are the fight. And really, they're, they're more the echo of the fight. <laughs> the real fight, the real battle is a matter of how we respond to adversity. That's why certain situations will arise and God will allow us to encounter certain situations that seem unideal. And a lot of times we look at the situation itself as the attack when that's not really the attack. The attack is the thoughts that come that suggest that we respond to it in a way that is contrary to the wisdom of God. Can I say that again? The real attack is a battle of the mind. It's a battle about how we respond, how we see, how we perceive. And that's what Paul is talking about here. He's saying your, your, your warfare, your battle, your fight is not one of flesh and blood. It's not against your physical neighbor. No, it may be against the ideology, but not the individual. You have to fight the right fight. It's a spiritual fight. But then that begs the question, <laughs> how do we fight? I'm so very glad you asked. Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 6, beginning in verse 13. Hallelujah. My God, I feel God's presence. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate, breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith hmm, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And then here comes the clincher, verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Wow. It never ceases to interest me or make me uh, curious or to intrigue me how of all the things listed in the armor of God, the one offensive thing is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. My God. Hallelujah. This lets us know that the word of God is God's ordained weapon for us in spiritual combat. Can I, can I say that again? Because whether it's fighting against demonic powers, whether it's fighting against a world system that is contrary to the things of God, or whether it's fighting against that old nature, those tend to be our three main enemies, the devil himself, uh, worldly ways or carnal ways that disagree with the will of, and the word of God, or, quite frankly, fighting against that old nature. Those, that's that tends to be where the battle lies. And he's saying the one effective weapon is the word of God. That is the sword of the spirit. In fact, go with me to uh, Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4. Glory be to God. I feel the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hey. I feel breakthrough. I just heard in the spirit breakthrough. If that's you, say breakthrough. If you're picking up on that, say breakthrough. I feel a breaking about to happen. My God, this is an unusual night for us, KTOK fam. I feel it. Hebrews chapter four, mm, verse 12 says, for the word of God is living and powerful. Glory be to God. The word of God is itself is living and powerful. Hang on to that. Mm -hmm. And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner, watch this, of the thoughts and intents of the heart. 
So to combat these ideologies that are contrary to the will of God, you need truth. You need to know what the truth is. And Jesus says somewhere in John 17, your word is truth, that the word of God is truth. Also says somewhere in John chapter eight, I believe, verses 31 and 32, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You know, many people quote that they say, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And a lot of times they're talking about their own truth. <laughs> they're talking about their own ideas. They're not talking about the word, but in context, Jesus is talking about the word of God, the word that is a sword that's sharper than any two-edged sword, the sword of the spirit. He's talking about that, which is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. He's talking about that, which is living and powerful. My God almighty. Hallelujah. So that is our offensive weapon, the word of God. And we know that there's power in speaking the word of God. There's power in declaring the word of God. There's power in uttering the word of God. In fact, there are places like Mark 11 and 23, where Jesus says, also surely I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He shall have whatsoever he says. So there's power when we speak the word of God. But ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that the real power isn't just in what we profess. No, the real power is in the word we possess. My God, I'm going to say that again. If you hear nothing else I say tonight, hear that. The real power isn't in the word we profess. The real power is in the word we possess. As a teacher of the word of God and as a preacher of the word of God, I love declaring the word of God. But even as preachers and teachers, we must be careful that we don't mix us preaching and teaching the word of God with us receiving the word of God. We have to be responsible, just like everyone else, to hear it for ourselves, to receive it for ourselves, to allow it to get on the inside of us. Why? Because the word itself is living, my God, and powerful. Ugh, my God, I feel it. Hallelujah. The word itself is living and powerful. In fact, type that in the chat. Say the word itself is living and powerful. Hallelujah. May I submit to you that we fight not with fist, not this spiritual warfare. We, f we don't fight with fists. We don't fight with guns. We don't fight with swords as the world does. No, not this particular warf warfare. We fight with the word of God. We fight by feasting on the word of God. Because ladies and gentlemen, when you get the word of God on the inside of you, the word will fight for you. Lord have mercy. I hope you're getting this tonight. When the word gets on the inside of you, when the word takes residence on the inside of you, when the word lives in you because the word itself is living and powerful, don't you know that that word will fight on your behalf? Glory be to God. That's why the prophet said in Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon, glory be to God, formed against you, shall be able to prosper. Glory be to God. That's why it also says that when the enemy comes against you like a flood, the spirit of God, the Lord will lift up a standard against him. That standard is the word of God. That standard is the word of truth. Glory be to God. I feel it. Hallelujah. If you can feel God's presence and God's power, just begin to type, I feel it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You might say, well, I thought the title of this message was fight. It is, but it's about fighting the right battle and it's about fighting the right way. And it could be that you're exhausted because you've been fighting the wrong fight and you've been fighting the wrong way. You've been trying to fight against flesh and blood. And you've been fighting in your own power versus recognizing the spiritual implications of your difficulties and your adversity and not realizing that you're fighting not against flesh and blood, but you're fighting against demonic powers. You're fighting against ideologies. You're fighting against your own nature, your own nature. Hallelujah. And the way you overcome is by the word of God on the inside of you. For we read, if you remember back in Ephesians chapter 6, Somewhere around verse 16, it talked about taking up the shield of faith. That's interesting because we know from Romans chapter 10, verse 17, so then faith comes how? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. Glory be to God. 
So again, it goes back to the word that when the word is on the inside of you in the form of faith, it becomes a shield. So even when the enemy tries to sling his darts toward you, his fiery darts toward you, it is quenched by the water of the word on the inside. Holy Spirit, glory be to God. I feel the power of God right now. Hallelujah. And let me let me tell you how the enemy works. I'm going to give you an example. This is actually the second time I've given this message. <laughs> I gave it first to an audience of one. Thought I had recorded it, but it didn't record. And I said, well, that's annoying. But then I said, you know what? That makes sense. <laughs> because sometimes the warfare manifests in the form of distracting us or getting us confused as it relates to the work that we do. So did I shrink back? Did I shrink back and be discouraged? No, because I recognized who I was fighting against. <laughs> and I believe that's a sign that this message hits home with somebody today. I believe that God has ordained for you to watch this because God is saying it's time for you to stop being defeated. It is time for you to lean on the name of Jesus and to overcome. You don't have to be defeated. You don't have to be discouraged. I feel like preaching. Can I say it like I want to? You don't have to be discouraged. You don't have to be defeated. But you can overcome. You can win the battle. Yeah, you lost yesterday. I get it. We all lost. We all have been there. But God is saying your past does not have to determine your future. That will be a Holy Ghost. God is saying when you allow his word to take up residence on the inside of you. God is saying that those battles you lost back then, you will win in the future because God is saying I will fight for you. Glory be to God. In fact, that's why it says in Exodus 14, 14, it says the Lord will fight to you and you fight for you and you shall hold your peace. How do we know that? Why do we know that? Because the word is living and powerful. Glory be to God. And when the word is working, it cannot lose. Glory be to God. I feel the power in the presence of God. I feel somebody being set free. I feel somebody being delivered. I feel somebody being encouraged to overcome. I can feel it even now. If that's you, let me know. Holler back at me. Let me hear you. Glory be to God. I feel God doing something. Hallelujah. God is saying this message is for you. God is saying it is time for you to be victorious. God is saying it's time for you to overcome. God is saying I know you've been tired. I know you've been weary. I know you've been discouraged. I know you've been dealing with a lot. But God is saying I've anointed you for such a time as this. But you're only going to win when you fight the good fight of faith. And when you fight with my word on the inside of you says the Lord. Hallelujah. If I'm talking to you, just begin to lift up your hands and give God praise. Just begin to give God the glory. Begin to give God the honor. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Start yielding your soul. Yielding your soul. Start using it by speaking the word of God. And as you speak the word of God, it's going to get on the inside. And it's going to work on your behalf. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Say I'm more than a conqueror. Ah. Say I'm the lender and not the borrower. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. Ah, oh, glory be to God. Begin to declare what the word of the Lord has said concerning you. Hey, glory be to God. Begin to declare the forgiveness of sins over yourself. That God has washed away your sin by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That by his stripes you're healed. If you're sick in your body, say by his stripes I am healed. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Know that the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you feel a spirit of heaviness, declare that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Declare I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. And as you speak these things, these things are seeping down on the inside of you and it's stirring up faith on the inside. So when you come up against that thing or that thing tries to come up against you, that word will work on the inside because it's living and powerful and it's going to cause you to overcome. And when all is said and done, you'll be forced to give God the glory because you will, re you will recognize that that was a battle that you used to lose. That was a, well, was a place that you used to be defeated, but now you're in counter victory. And the difference was that the word is now working on the inside of you. The difference is that Jesus is now taking residence on the inside of you and he will go before you and fight on your behalf. Glory be to God. If I'm talking to you, shout hallelujah. If I'm talking to you, give God praise. Hallelujah. God, I feel his presence in this place. Hallelujah. Somebody's coming out. 
Somebody's being delivered. Somebody's being set free. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, everything that's come against your mind, your psychological well-being, your physical well-being, your mental and emotional health, your spiritual well-being, I come against it now. In the name of Jesus, come out in the mighty name of Jesus. Be loosed and be set free in the power of Jesus' name. Glory be to God. I feel him here. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Somebody may say, why does he keep on saying glory be to God? Because to him belongs the credit. It's God who's doing this. He's doing it by his word because his word is living and powerful. And his word is setting you free. Hallelujah. Depression is lifting up off of you. The spirit of heaviness is lifting up off of you. Mm -hmm. Sickness is beginning to bow. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Defeat and discouragement are beginning to flee. Because now the light of Christ is beginning to shine. It's like you're beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel. If I'm talking to you, say that's me. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You don't have to be defeated. You can overcome by the power of God, by the word of God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We honor you for this awesome time we've encountered tonight. God, I thank you for those who are watching this video. Everyone under the sound of my voice, I thank you that there is an anointing for breakthrough, that there's an anointing for deliverance right now. I thank you, Lord God, that there are those who are listening, that those who are watching even right now, who are being set free by the power of Jesus' name. And perhaps they didn't even expect this. Perhaps they thought they were just stumbling upon a video. Perhaps they thought they were just trying to support, but they have encountered their own deliverance and God for that we thank you we thank you that you're healing we thank you that you're restoring we thank you that you go before us and you fight for us glory be to God we thank you that as we put our confidence in you and as your word takes up residence on the residence on the inside of us that the word fights for us glory be to God that you are our shield and our defense Hallelujah. And I thank you that because you are our shield and our defense, because you, God, are our protection, we know that we are divinely protected and no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper and that we shall win. That is why we can say we're more than conquerors. <laughs> That's why we can say we're overcomers. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And we thank you for your word that lets us know that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Jesus, we thank you that because you overcame, we can overcame, we, we can overcome in your name. Father, we thank you for these things. We ask them in Jesus' name. And everybody who agree and receives this word, say amen. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, shout wherever you are. Just begin to give God praise and thank him. Receive your victory. Receive it by faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on and bless him. Come on, speak well of him. Come on, lift your hands and celebrate. Come on, rejoice that you're being made free. Come on, rejoice and celebrate. Move your body, move around, celebrate, rejoice. God is setting you free right now. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You are tasting deliverance. This is what freedom tastes like. Glory be to God. You can now see yourself free. Glory be to God. Come on and celebrate. Come on, rejoice. Hallelujah. Glory to God been moved by what you have experienced tonight and you desire a closer walk with God you desire to have relationship with God through Jesus Christ I encourage you to bow your head close your eyes and say these words after me say Lord Jesus I acknowledge that you are king that you are the Lord that you are God I acknowledge that I am a sinner in need of salvation I ask now that you come into my heart wash my sins away Make me who you created me to be. Fill me with your spirit. Transform my life. Let me live with you forever. And I know that I shall never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, I encourage you to reach out to me. Again, my email address is travis.a.newsome.ministries at gmail.com. You'll find that information later on in this video, so I encourage you to stay tuned. But I'm so glad that you've decided to spend some time with me tonight. Again, Happy New Year to you. What better way to start the new year than rededicating or dedicating yourself 
to God for the first time and giving your life to him, it is my prayer sincerely that indeed you become all that God created you to be. Don't quit. Don't give up. Put your trust in God. He knows what he created you to be. He knows what he put on the inside of you. And what God has in store for you is far greater than what you can ever imagine. So put your trust in him. I encourage you to make sure that you stay tuned for the following announcements. Make sure you join me again here next week. Same time, same place, 8 p.m. Central. Uh, every Saturday night, we gather like this to get into the word and experience and encounter God together and be transformed together. So glad that you've joined me tonight. Make sure you tell a friend. Make sure you tell those that you know. If this program has blessed you tonight, share it with someone that you know that they might be blessed as well. Again, if you have watched this video and you have not yet subscribed, please do so. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you can be notified of new videos. You can stay in the loop of all that's going on with this ministry. Again, God bless you. And have a fantastic evening. In Jesus' name. Oh.